So Deuteronomy is uh, the last of the five books of what's called the Pentateuch, which just literally means five books. But it's also called the, the Torah, or the Law. So uh, these are the five books that Moses wrote, or at least that they say Moses wrote. And Deuteronomy itself is kind of a long sermon series, very long three-part sermon um, that's really prepping the people before they enter the Promised Land. Because I don't know if you remember this story right, but Moses leads them 40 years through the wilderness, and he gets to see the Promised Land, but he doesn't actually get to go into it. He dies, and the people are led by Joshua, his successor, into the Promised Land. And so this is kind of his preparation for them as they enter into this foreign land that they are called to possess. And just as a footnote, I, um, I really wanted to work in how I could talk about Manifest Destiny and how this story is really connected to the history of America, but I just, I couldn't make it work with what I wanted to preach on. So I will preach that uh, to you another day because that's a very important piece for us in modern times as we relate to the story of Deuteronomy and the kind of the movement of the Hebrew peoples out of slavery in Egypt and into Canaan. But basically, this part is where Moses is trying to distill what's the thing I need you to know in order to live with God in this new space. And interestingly, uh, Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, actually does commentary on this particular piece of scripture. You don't often get Paul doing uh, a lot of commentary on Hebrew scripture, but he does in Romans 10. And so I just want to share it with you because... Paul is also trying to tell the people that he's talking to, this is what you need to remember. This is the core idea you need for life. So I just want you to listen to this because it's pretty different. This is from Romans uh, chapter 10, verse 5. If you want to follow along, it's in uh, page 965 in your pew Bible. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend to heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, leading to righteousness, and one confesses with the mouth, leading to salvation. So Paul is reinterpreting this scripture and saying, you know what you really need to do is you need to confess that Jesus is Lord, and you need to trust that Jesus was raised from the dead. And these are kind of principles that a lot of modern Christianity has really hung on. Is these are the tests of faith. And in fact, they show up in our baptismal liturgy, they show up in our liturgy for bringing on new members that these are core. Now, from my perspective, I read these and I say, oh, so you need to proclaim that Jesus and not any other human institution or creation is gonna have power and lordship over my life. And I need to trust that even with the weapons of empire and death, I will not be afraid, but I will live consistent with this trust and these values because the Lord God has resurrected Christ from the dead and therefore this threat of death can no more be held against me and my community. But I will live free of the fear of death. No Lord but God, no fear of death. See, what Paul's trying to say is the thing that we need in order to live in this space of freedom, this space of emancipation, is this indwelling in, of the Spirit of God within us, not this authority that's outside of us. So when he reads Moses say, you do not have to travel far for this. This word is in your mouth and written on your heart. Remember, Paul wasn't ever reading Christian scripture. He ended up writing it, but he didn't know that he was doing that at the time. 
right? He had an experience and an encounter with the living Christ. He didn't go to the book of Matthew and figure out what Jesus was all about. He had this experience of Christ in his life. And so when he talks about the word, he's talking about this experience of the word of God being spoken in and through him. Now Moses has a different interest, right? Paul's interest is really this interest in salvation from judgment, right? Because Paul, remember, has been this very dutiful uh, Jew who's been fulfilling all the laws and all the commandments and yet has been feeling like, and maybe some of us have been feeling this too, I do all the work that I can, I make sure that I try to live sustainably, I try to recycle, I try to be thoughtful about my consumption, and yet still it doesn't seem like this is changing, I'm still convictable, right? As much as I can look at my life and say, well, it could be worse, I can always still look at my life and say, well, it could be better, right? I could be doing more, right? I could, I could be hustling and creating, and I could be committing more of my time, and, da, 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 and you can always say that, right? How many of you have been trapped in that trap recently? I'm not going to say ever, because everyone's hand would go up, but recently, trapped in the trap of, I'm not doing enough. I'm not being enough. There isn't enough. I'm not enough. And so Paul, for him, the place of freedom, the place of living in that prosperity and that choosing life of God is figuring out a way to get over this condemnation that he expects and anticipates. For Moses, it's really different. When he talks about what we need, what he says that we need more than anything is we need to stay committed and loyal to this God, this one God, the true God. He talks about this all throughout Deuteronomy because that's going to provide us security. That's going to provide us stability. That's going to give us the things that we need in our life. But both of them are really saying that we need something in order to allow us the space to rest and to trust. For Paul, he needs to let go of judgment. He needs to let go of his own self-criticism. For Moses, it's about, he needs to let go of his anxiety about how am I going to provide for these people? How am I going to care for these people? How am I going to get these people over to the other side? They've been screwing this up a lot. Ah! Well, they got to stay connected to this one guy. But both of them are interested in figuring out what do we need to be able to to trust. What do we need to be able to rest? Both of them are trying to figure out how are we going to relate to this God to allow us to have some kind of peace in our life. Do you know what you need in order to be able to trust and rest? Do you know what your predominant anxiety is that's pulling you away from this God and this spaciousness. This is one of the things that I think is so helpful in examining these various scriptures is seeing that it's different for everybody. Every person in this room needs something different in order to open up that expansive space of relationship with God in their life. One of the reasons I gave you those little cards is I think that thinking about what kind of spirituality we have can help us recognize where what we need can come from and how can we get there and just spending a little bit more time intentional about it because there's so many authorities out there that tell us what spirituality is supposed to look like. We're supposed to go sit quietly and receive from God, and that will be this mystical opening that will somehow magically bring us in connection with God. And that works for some of us. How many of you, is that your jam? A couple, right? 100%. <laughs> How different is it? How many of you have this kind of spirituality and relationship with the earth where you're digging in the earth and planting? and connecting and, and arranging and watering and growing that action that you have to, to shepherd and nurture and support life. It, there's a movement to it. There's an energy to it. There's a, there's a doing to it that feels so satisfying and feeding. How many of you is that you? Exactly. 
Exactly. They're not mutually exclusive. And that's the thing about our spirituality is our spirituality is always multifaceted. But often we have a, a preferred or a predominant, something that makes it easier for us to drop in. Because I know, how many of you look at your garden or what used to be a garden that hasn't been a garden for a while and you have a lot of anxiety and guilt and frustration that you haven't been doing enough? You haven't been showing up enough. You haven't been caring. And then it moves you back into that judgment space. <laughs> and for some of us, it's that uh, seeing that wildness, right, where the edges kind of start blending and bringing in more of that diversity. And oh my gosh, now I can appreciate the glory of this fireweed. Did any of you know fireweed? <laughs> yeah, right? Our God did not intend for each of us to connect to God in the same way. Just like our God did not intend for each of us to be the same. Just look around this room at the diversity of people that are in this room right now. How many different ways we move through life. The difference in the priorities that we set and the ways that we are embodied. Our God intended for all of us to be able to have a personal relationship. And the purpose of scripture is really not to tell us the one right way but to remind us that it's about us finding our way, our way to God. So when Moses says, look, the thing I put before you is not far from you. It's not difficult for you. And when Paul says the thing that we need to do is we need to make these confessions, he's not saying we need to interpret this in this way. He's saying, how are we going to get to the place where we can trust this God enough, where we can know this God enough? even just for a minute. Because every time we do that, at least every time I have done that, all of a sudden the things that were important that aren't that important, they get moved down. And the things that are really important that I haven't been paying attention to, they move up. So what do you need in your life right now to not check out, not space out, but settle? And maybe it's something active. Maybe it's something exciting and enlivening. Maybe it's dance and music. Maybe it's people and action. Maybe it's digging in the dirt and getting that stuff that takes a while to get out from under your fingernails. You know what I'm talking about? Where you got to work at it for a minute. You got to get some special tools, right? Something about that focus. Something that brings you into that space. You are to choose life with God because God has chosen.